Hello everybody, my name is Ultra and today I'm going to show you guys how I make my YouTube thumbnails. Tutorial videos are always something I've kind of been interested in. I've been kind of curious on like how I'd go about doing them. I thought I might as well, for my first tutorial, show you guys how I make YouTube thumbnails. First of all, you just gotta open up a Photoshop document, like it's as simple as that. You get a 1280 by 720p image, has to be this, preferably this at least. I wouldn't go for a 1080p image, because more often than not, it's gonna be too large for YouTube to handle. 720p is a very safe bet though. First thing I gotta do is get rid of this background. I hate the background. I never use it. Never like it. Uh, hit Control A, select all. I'm gonna go to select and modify and contract and we're gonna contract by 20 pixels. Make sure apply effect at canvas bounds is selected. Once this will do, it'll give you this little uh, border over here. You have to hit Control Shift I to invert the selection. So you can see we're not actually going for this little center bit here. And if I just undo it here, we're not going for this bit here, we're going for this outer bit. Oh, whoop. Here you go. Now we're going for this outer bit. Deselect, and then go over here. Now what you see over here is the blending mode. The blending mode is very important here. The little border you see on all of my thumbnails, I always mess with the little blending mode to get that to work. On the border, you want to go over here and make sure the blending mode is set to overlay. At first you're not going to see anything because there's nothing behind it, but trust me it'll come out really nice in the end. Next thing you want to do is get a screenshot from your video or something to do with the game or topic that you're covering in your video. This is a screenshot I was actually going to use for my Welcome to Russia series before that kind of halted. Something you want to do first of all is adjust the image so then only the important bits are in the thumbnail. You don't really need the excess bits, you really just need the any people or objects that are, you know, key in the video. If you want to mess with some blending effects, that's totally cool. I could go to adjustments and mess around with the saturation a little bit. Only make little tweaks, really you don't need to do anything too crazy, otherwise the image is just gonna look weird and you're not gonna like it, trust me. Now say if I wanted to blur the area behind the people in the front, that is sort of easily done. You'll have to use the quick selection tool over here, you just right click, by default it should say magic wand, you wanna have quick selection enabled and just kind of go around this whole area of the image, all right? This does a pretty good job of actually auto-selecting everything, so more often than not, you don't have to deal with tweaking anything. In this case, I would have to, though, because there's a lot of colors and confusion, and Photoshop doesn't really know how to handle it. I'm not going to bother with that for now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get the lasso tool, set the feather to, uh, we'll say, 50 pixels. That'd be good. And I'll just like select the general area that we're all in. The first thing you're going to want to do just before you go applying any effect, you want to rasterize the layer, otherwise a lot of things won't work. When you first drag an image in, it'll come in as a smart layer, you want to rasterize the image first. Next, invert your selection, go over to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, there you go, a little Gaussian blur. Again, not necessary, it seems like there's actually a bit too much Gaussian Blur. If you want, you can also use a Motion Blur, which looks pretty nice, just don't use too much of it. Something like 15 or 20 pixels should do you fine, realistically. Something I almost forgot, for the border, you want to double-click this, and you want to go down to Drop Shadow. Drop Shadow is actually pretty important. Really, the settings here can be tweaked almost infinitely. Like, you can have this set up however you like, I normally just have uh, shadow with a size of 50 and an opacity of 50, but you can mess with these settings all you like, it doesn't really matter. Now realistically, the way this thumbnail is already would do, this would do for a thumbnail, but I think we should add a little bit more, don't you think? I'm gonna go and throw in my profile picture over here, I'm gonna have that just stuck to the side. Something cool we can do as well, we can drag our image over here, just gonna make sure it doesn't you know, go off the screen so you get a little empty area over here. Make sure every layer you have is below the border, otherwise it's gonna, it's like, this looks weird. You don't want this. You want it to be behind the border. It looks way nicer. Something I do with every asset I put on top, I always add a drop shadow to that as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm just tweaking the settings a lot here. You can do whatever you want, just keep tweaking with it until it looks good, really. Something I tend to do for some of my thumbnails as well is I add, um, you know, I, I draw my own little things to go in the image. Like, if I drag over my thumbnail from my collaboration video with Volox, you can see I drew my own little character over there. 
just you know sitting off it was a pretty simple drawing there's not too much to it like you can even see like the lines are really uneven in size and all that it, it almost looks kind of like a sketch it doesn't have to be too complex of a design at the end of the day. After all, the thumbnail will probably be like this size for anyone who's just clicking on the video. If you want to make things flashier, that'll also work. I'm gonna just, as a funny meme, just add like a, I don't know, a lens flare or something. I'll be damned, the, the lens flare actually looked good in that. I am legitimately surprised by that. Okay. Really, from here, you're done. I mean, the, the thumbnails aren't too hard to make. Again, the system is pretty simple. Once you got a hang of it, you can do it a thousand times over. Thumbnails take me about three minutes to make. The most time that's spent is on, like on occasion drawing a whole new character or something for the thumbnail. And again, it's a pretty rare occurrence, so you you shouldn't really have to do that for most of your thumbnails. But though it does add a lot of customization to it, it makes it look very unique and it kind of stands out. Overall, having animated stuff in thumbnails does generally look nice, in my opinion. Just having a game screenshot with some text on it, it really doesn't pop out as much, in my opinion. If you do happen to have text, I do recommend styling it. Take this thumbnail from Meanwhile in General 4. You can see with some of the text I've styled, I've made the 4 all shiny, put the hashtag general, I've highlighted that. But yeah, there you have it. There is your finished thumbnail. If you guys have anything else that you want me to teach you, for example, how I edit stuff in a certain way or anything like that, please do let me know. My next video will probably be how to set up OBS because I do have my OBS settings very fine-tuned to get them as perfect as I can get them. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one.